1934, she was an eager young newcomer to feature films. Soon she would be acknowledged as a talented beauty on her way to success. A boring country. Boring. Then came Hollywood. The awards. The glamour. The adulation of millions who claimed her as their star. But when her private life clashed with her public image, they turned on her. Deserted by her fans, publicly vilified, it seemed as if her career was over. However, she was never just a star. She was an actress, a great one, a courageous one. And that made all the difference. Her name was Ingrid Bergman. She never had time to waste. I remember going to the cinema with her and suddenly she would whisper in my ear, I don't like this movie, I'm leaving. I don't have time to waste. The important thing about her was that she never stopped working. She never just said, this is me and I can sell this. And that's enough. I don't want to ride only limousines. I don't want to be only in hotel suites. I want to walk down the street and be the person who I really am. And this was the uh, most important thing to me about her as a, as, as a person, was that insistence on, on honesty and truth and uh, her feet always on the ground. There have been many changes around Stockholm's Nibrovikan. The ferries still run. The storefronts of the Strandwegen still remain. Here, Eustace Bergman had a photography shop. And in this same stronghold of conventional, middle-class respectability, he made his home. But there was a difference. For under the towered roof, he also kept his painting studio. And in this color-filled environment, his daughter Ingrid was born. Friedel, Ingrid's mother, had left her secure German background to marry Eustace, a struggling artist. Of their three children, only Ingrid survived. Ingrid became the center of her father's life and the subject of movies made on each of her birthdays. Through him, she learned to view the camera as a friend. This shot was to be Ingrid's closest link with her mother. By the following year, filming took place at Friedel's graveside. A bohemian at heart, Eustace raised his daughter to be a part of a formal, well-bred world. But every free moment, he encouraged all that was artistic and individual in Ingrid. When I came to Ingrid, I was 18 age and Ingrid 9. And I, I think that her father wanted someone to be her older sister. And I think we was sisters. And she was very, very happy. Ingrid lived often in imaginations. She played uh, princess, she was a dog, she was a cat, and she was singing much. And her father, he learned her very much. He wanted her to be a great opera singer. But uh, she wanted to be an actress. Ingrid would never need to be taught about grief or the briefness of life. At 13, she lost the father who believed her the most talented, the most beautiful of children. Her aunt Ellen took Ingrid in, but she too died within months and in Ingrid's arms. When Ingrid was 15 years old, I took her with me to film studio. 
I had a little role in a film there and I thought perhaps she could have a little job extra too. And after she said to me, I must be a film star, she couldn't believe that they paid her because she was so happy. Only two years later, Ingrid was to take the first major step towards her goal. Just yards from her childhood home was Stockholm's Royal Dramatic Theatre and its drama school. Here, such great players as Greta Garbo had studied. Ingrid applied for a scholarship to this distinguished institution and happily she was accepted. Actor and director Frank Sundström was a fellow student. She was a very different kind of person. Uh, this was at a time when uh, women in this country uh, were not supposed to uh, have ideas of their own, but not so Ingrid. Uh, she got, I think, disappointed in the school because she felt that uh, she didn't come forward early enough. She wanted to get into the, to the, to the work uh, as fast as she possibly could. And that is the reason why she uh, left the Royal Dramatic School to start to make films. At 18, Ingrid had her first speaking part in the Count of the Monk's Bridge. Other roles followed quickly, leading parts. The star strike had listened was suddenly a movie actress. And for Ingrid, the joy of acting would never diminish. Praised for her gentle beauty, Ingrid began to yearn for greater challenge. She found it in a woman's face. Why should she slip under so big? Oh, no. Då känner ni inte mig. Har hon inte allt en kvinna kan önska sig? Viewers were taken aback at this Ingrid. Coarse, disfigured. Avgudad. Var hon inte vacker? Jo, oh, visst hon vacker. Ja, då så. Ska hon inte betala för det? Meanwhile, an important event had occurred. She'd met a handsome dentist almost ten years older than herself, and they'd fallen in love. At 21, Ingrid was married to Peter Lindstrom. And with the birth of their daughter, Pia, Ingrid's happiness seemed complete. Vet ni vad ni påminner mig om? Me? Jo, men viner vals. Intermezzo, the highly acclaimed film of an ill-fated love affair, resulted in world attention for Ingrid. Då vi en ändå en lycklig stad. Ja, ni är poet. Det blev man där nere. Den gång. It also brought to Stockholm the woman who would become her agent and lifelong friend, Kay Brown. Ingrid Bergman had come to our attention, and Mr. Salzenick sent me to talk to her and to get a contract with her, if possible. <laughs> it's a long time since I had that conversation, and as I recall it, we ended up with one picture and an option for another picture. In the meantime, I'd got to meet and know this lovely family, and I kind of worried as to whether or not this was a wise decision on her part. At any rate, that night we were walking in Old Town, and I had the courage to bring it up. I said, uh, are you sure this is the right thing that you want to do? You've got a wonderful husband and a lovely baby, and you have all the work that you want. And she said, yes, it was, because she wanted challenges in life and work in life. 